People are frequently nervous about how to create a work cited for their paper using either MLA or APA formats and how to make in-text citations. But you know what? The new versions of Word make it really easy. Let's look at the easiest way to do the steps. You'd start off on the References tab, which I'll show you in just a moment, and choose what you want, MLA or APA. And then you use the Manage Sources form to fill out one little form for each of your sources. Now, if you've been doing this correctly, you would have already done your research and have all of your sources ready. That's why you do this part first. After that, you just use them. You can use them for your in-text citations and also for your works cited or bibliography, whichever is required of you. It's really not too difficult, and let's go look and see how it works. I have a Word document here. I'm using Word 2007, but I believe it's the same in Word 2010. I'm on the References tab. Do you see the References tab? I'm not on the Home tab. I'm on the References tab. And in the center, there's a section called Citations and Bibliography. The first thing I'll do is choose whether I want to use APA style or MLA style. For this example, I'll use MLA style. I could do this before I ever start typing my document or at any point after I have started typing. The second step is to go up to Manage Resources. A window appears, and I'm going to delete the one I have in there so I can start all over from the beginning, and you'll see that there's an option to enter a new source. I'm going to click that option. And the first thing I have to do is choose what kind of source it is. We want to choose a website. I happen to have off screen here a website that you might be using for something. Let me grab it and bring it over. This is the Bureau of Labor Statistics Occupational Outlook Handbook for 2010 and 11. And I'm choosing to use that source as part of my paper. The first thing I'm going to do actually while I'm here is click on the title, on the URL to select it, and then you can click Control C, Control C to copy if you know how, or right click, copy. Did you see that my right click made a different color? little symbol on the video and I'm going to move that back off screen again or almost off screen you can tell it's still there and one of the requirements I need here is down on the URL I need to paste the URL the uniform resource locator and I can either right click paste or use control V V like Victor control V to paste after that, we can start writing in the other information. I happen to have noticed that there was no author available when I looked at that site, but the corporate author, since this is the government, would be the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The name of the web page is Occupational Outlook Handbook. 2010 11 edition. I'll try to type it accurately. Occupational Outlook Handbook 2010 11 edition. And what's the year of it? Well, conveniently, if you're using Firefox, oh, I'm, I'm in Internet Explorer. Okay, I'll do it in Internet Explorer. 
under, I have to find it again, page, properties, it will show the last time this page was modified. Now, it doesn't look very accurate to me because it happens to be today, but we'll use that. 11-25-2010. Sometimes, while I'm here, if you look at the bottom of the page, more typically, it would show the date it was last updated, but I already looked at this one, and it does not show. So we'll just go ahead and use the date that's listed there. Sometimes you might not be able to find a date of the website. Just do the best you can with what you got to work with. And then very important on a, a work site, it is the date you accessed it, 2010, 11, 25. And that's all there is to fill in for this form for a website. If I had used a book or something else, the requirements would be different, but all I have to do is fill out the form. When I clicked OK, it automatically showed up in the master list and the current list. You might have two lists. We won't worry about it. Uh, if, and uh, we could, you know, if you ever write a big paper, you can worry about it then. We could edit this again if we needed to. You see, the same form comes up. Or we could create another new one. When we're done, we can close. If you find another site later that you need to add, just come back to Manage Sources again, and the same window will show up. Okay, let's say that we're typing some text. Watch me type. I'm fast. You know, you would put in quotation marks if you quoted something directly from a source and use then an insert citation Bureau of Labor Statistics and the computer will automatically add for you what needs to be added. If it is a direct quote you put it in quotation marks. If it's not a direct quote but you used the information which certainly you're going to be doing because you're not the expert in whatever subject you're writing about even though you did not quote from it directly, you still need to use a citation for it. The citation looks the same, it's just that there are no quotation marks. When you're ready for your Works Cited page, the best way to get to the next page is not to press the Enter key a million times, because as soon as you get on that next page, if I ever do, and then as soon as I have to make any editing to my original document, my next page is going to, well, I didn't make enough. The next page is going to be messed up. So don't do it like that. Here. Don't do it like that. Let me show you. Easy way. Woof, I had so much in there. The easy way to do it is to press Control Enter. Look down at your keyboard. Control Enter. And what it does is insert a hard page break or a manual page break. If you have your Show Hide key turned on, you will see it. Mine is on. Let me turn it off. If you don't have the Show Hide key turned on, you will not see it. That is a good reason to use the Show Hide key. And it just sends you, whoops, sends you directly to the next page. <clears throat> now we're back on the References tab. Now we want to insert our work cited. The word they use is bibliography. The difference between a bibliography and a work cited is that the bibliography includes everything you looked at, whereas the work cited includes only the ones for which you did an insert citation. You used the information directly in your paper. Most of the teachers nowadays, I think, are asking for a work cited, unless you're doing perhaps a master's thesis or something, in which case bibliography would be long and complex, and that's what they want. So here, let's click work cited. 
it puts a title there for you and it inserts for you all of the sources you entered. I only entered one. They're all in the correct format for you, believe it or not. There's nothing for you to do. Oh, wait, except. It does not set them in standard MLA format because, I don't know why not, actually. Uh, I think because it could apply to, well, I don't know. So, so anyway, what you want to do is use the click and drag method to select the text of your works cited, not the title, but the text. And then we want to change that format to a hanging indent format, at least for me, that's what I expect you to do. And you can do that up on the ruler bar. Is your ruler bar turned on? Let me show you how to turn it on. Come with me to the right side of the screen, way over, way over to the right side of the screen. And you see that tiny little view ruler button? Wants to turn it on, wants to turn it off. It's a toggle. Okay, let's run back to the left side of the screen now. Now you have to drive this mouse very carefully to do this exercise. You move the mouse up into that house, not the first floor of the house, but you get that point of the mouse right up in the second floor of the house until the tooltip says hanging indent. And then you click and drag only the house, not the chimney, over to half an inch. And it will reformat all of your work cited for you so that they are in hanging indent format. Your teacher may also ask you to make it double spaced or single spaced with double spaced between. Different teachers ask for different things. If you need to make it double spaced, do you know how to do that? Up on the home tab, under line spacing, it's in the paragraph group, line spacing, double and that will make it double spaced. Do you notice that this text is gray when you click on it? That means it's a code. The computer has entered it for you. And that's perfectly fine. Oh, oh, what if your teacher said to make the work cited in the center of the line? Then I can go up on the Home tab and just center that one title right there. If you have your work cited applied, entered here once, and you make changes later, you will need to update it. It does not automatically update, and when you update, you lose the format, but what are you going to do? The other way that you can update it is to right-click on it and click Update Field. If you're using 2000, well, 2003 will do this, but it 2003 does not have this form, so you couldn't use it. But update field, that's another way to update. And that would be your last page of your document. Be sure to remember that there are extra enter keys in here. Typically, you'll have some extras at the bottom, and you'll want to take out those enter keys. You'll have one left, but you can get rid of the extras at the bottom. Well, the only way to learn to make a work cited is to actually sit down and do it. So why don't you try, just like I have done now, play around with it, make one for fun, and then when you're ready to do your regular paper, you'll be all set for your work cited.